So I think it's so important for research to make its way into the outside world, whether that's to make a change, an instrumental change to a policy, or whether it's just contributing to a new conversation about um, a particular area of in inquiry. The way that evidence is used, I think, is critical to making sure that the right conversations are happening between the right people in the right way. Without the research evidence, we can't properly inform decision-making at the highest levels. I think there are different ways that evidence can be used. And how that happens depends on how that evidence is communicated. So it's so important that the researchers think about who their audience is when they're conducting their research and producing their evidence and communicating that. Are you trying to communicate to, to governments? Are you trying to communicate to individuals in society? And depending on who that audience is, affects how you formulate the communication of that evidence. And I think the, the way that the evidence is used is going to be different depending on the context. If it's government, it's about you know, policy briefings and, and engagement with the research activity and the research outcomes so they can make effective decisions. Um, with community groups, it's about just understanding and learning um, about their society and about their community and how they can be empowered to ask for more. Um, I think the key learning that we take from, from the Joint Fund and other um, work that we've done in partnership between ESRC and DFID is just that, it's the importance of partnerships. and building those partnerships into the earliest stages of the research really helps to drive the research in the right direction to enable impact to happen. Um, it's a bit of a chicken and egg, I think, sometimes, because you want some evidence to be able to convince a partner to join with you. But in order to get that evidence and make that evidence the right evidence, you need the partner to be engaged before you produce it. So it's a challenging thing to try and do, particularly with um, policy. Um, but I think it's so important to, to have the connections and personal connections um, with the partners that you want to influence. I think actually the potential influence of research goes way beyond policy. We talk about um, policy change as kind of this gold standard impact. And, and it is because it's the, potentially the one that has the most far-reaching consequences. But actually much more incremental um, impacts are equally valuable. Capacity building, training people to um, to conduct research, but also um, in terms of you know, practice and, um, and their own work and their own skill set. Um, changing the discourse around a subject, just increasing the body of knowledge and the understanding that we have about a policy-related subject, but not necessarily going so far as actually changing that policy. To me, it's really clear that social science needs to be at the centre of any kind of development-related research activity. It gives you the understanding of the context. It gives you the understanding of the politics, how all the different elements um, of environment, health, um, political structure, social cohesion and social drivers, how they all come together to produce an environment in which you can really understand a problem. I think without social science, helping us kind of understand how people 
interact with the world, no amount of widgets or uh, cures for disease are going to have any impact. Mm. 